Welcome back to Grand Tactician The Civil War. This is our Confederate campaign that started in 1861, February, the early start. I have advanced time to March the 4th, 1863. That was between episodes. <laughs> if you're new to the channel, why not hit the channel up and go and have a look at my playlists, have a look at the videos and go back and watch episodes that you might have missed leading up to this point. This is episode 26 of this series, so it's been going for a quite a while now and we are entering 1863. So we left off the previous video somewhere around the end of October, beginning of November, I want to say. I can't remember exactly when it was, but uh, I've ran through the winter quarters. There's been a lot of things going on, so I'm going to talk through what I've done over these past three months of winter quarters. If you don't want to watch this bit, or if you're not interested, you're not bothered, you just want to see the campaign, then I will chapter this video and just go wherever you want to go and watch from wherever you want to watch from. But for those of you who are interested, let's have a quick chat through what I've done. So this might be a slightly longer video than I normally do, but, you know, that's fine. Um, in Virginia, nothing much has changed. We're still holding this defensive line. We had the regulars join us, if you remember. That was just under 10,000 men that are under Braxton Bragg. They joined us at Richmond. I've moved them across to Cairo and they have joined the Army of Mississippi. So let's have a quick look at the Army of Mississippi while we're talking about them. Van Dorn used to be part of the Army of Mississippi. I've transferred him permanently now to this Missouri force. Missouri is our main theater at the moment. So this is like kind of, it's our Virginia basically. So anyway, there's Bragg with his regular core. Okay, let's have a quick look. So we've got Longstreet here. Longstreet's got 46,000 men. Uh, and 80 guns so he could do with some more guns um but we'll get to guns in a moment we're a little short on guns as such so we've got donaldson's core 17,800 men zolikoff has core 18 and a half thousand men and brag like we say just under 10,000. um so these guys are all regulars we've upgraded their weapons so they Fayetteville's, Lawrence, 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 uh, Mississippi's even. <laughs> uh, they've got rifle guns for in their artillery division, which is great. Richmond carbines for their CAV unit there. Then Zolikoff's corps. Now, these guys were pretty poorly armed, and they're still not amazing, but I've given them new weapons. We'll just run through them real quick. Our Springfield still was still short on a few rifles. Mississippi's, Springfield Muskets, Rebor Muskets. This is one of our worst armed forces. Uh, How it says, and 12 pound iron Napoleons in his guns here. Uh, so, like I say, this is a fairly weak core in terms, especially in terms of guns and weaponry. Um, Robertson's division, this is the artillery division. It's How it says, and Napoleons, which I mean, you know, that's not ideal at all. Let's have a quick look at Donaldson's core. So, we've got Withers division. Reboard muskets with Taylor, Manigault, reboard re muskets, uh, Mississippi rifles, Augustin rifle musket, Mississippi rifle, and another set of Augustin. So, I mean, that's okay. At least they're rifle armed. 12 pound Napoleon and 14 pound of James's. So, I mean, ideally, I don't want smooth balls in this, uh, in the artillery divisions, but you know, it's just the way it is at the moment. And we've got Lomax with Springfield musketoons. Uh, something else I will mention is that we have taken the British Rifles uh, project. So we do now get British Rifles. Um, British Artillery is a, a separate one. It will get us the Blakely Rifle. Cool. 6 and 12 pound breech loaders. Uh, fast and accurate Whitworth Rifles. Also nice. Um, the breech loading 3 inch Armstrong Rifle. Awesome. Armstrong Rifles were actually made not far from where I grew up. And where I live now, in fact. In North East England. Very cool. Um, but yeah, so we, we ta we've taken the British Rifles perk, and I've got some on order. We'll have a quick look at the weapon situation. Like I say, there's not a lot going. We haven't got much in the way of CAV weapons, so I have just given out a whole boatload of Burnside carbines. We'll get to them soon. I've got Enfield Musketoons. We've got 10,000 of those on order, but there's still 10 days to go for those, but we'll have 10,000 of them, and they are fairly good weapons. 400-yard range, very good accuracy, three and a half rounds per minute, which is awesome. But we'll come back to cav weapons and the cavalry in a moment. 
We've got access also to rifles now. So I, I took this, uh, the rifles, the rifled guns project. We can't get parrots, but we can order three inch ordnance. Uh, we've got 128 on order, so they're going to really update our arsenal if the war goes on that long in 76 days. I'm hoping to finish this war pretty soon, but the three inch ordnance rifle will certainly help with that if we need it. Uh, Enfield rifle muskets, we've got 10,000 on order again, 10 days for those, so that they'll be going out our troops. Uh, the Wired, or Weird, maybe? I like to call them Wizard Rifles. <laughs> I know it's wrong. But anyway, um, so we've got them on order as well. They're still in the 58 days away, so 64 of those. But they are very good. Uh, two and a half rounds a minute, a very good accuracy, 1,800 yard range. So they're pretty damn good. Uh, we've got a handful of Richmond Rifles, but not enough to give out. We've got these awesome rifles as well. 10,000 Whitworth rifles. Now let's check these out. They only fire two rounds a minute, but accuracy, excellent. Effective range, 600 yards. A British muzzle loading rifle musket with exceptionally good long range accuracy. Widely regarded as the world's first sniper rifle. So those 10,000 are going to come in really handy. We're going to give them out to someone who's going to do our skirmishing, obviously, once we get them. What else have we got? Uh, nothing much here. We've got 50 odd of these 12 pound iron Napoleons, which I'll give out as we come across units that need upgrading. We've got 14 12 pound Napoleons. Again, I mean, not, not too exciting, not enough to give out, but not really an improvement. We've got 15,000 Springfield muskets available. Uh, mixed car weapons. We've got a couple hundred of these Augustins, but that's it for weapons. As, as you can see, we are a little short, but we have got some on order. Uh, and these 10,000, where are they? Enfield Musketoons, they should really help improve some of our troops. Um, so let's, since I was talking about the Cav, let's have a quick look at the Army of Tennessee. I've added, in, I've, well, I've shifted things around a little bit here, and I've given us a new corps. That's Wheeler's Corps. Wheeler, you might remember, was an infantry division commander for us, but he is actually a cavalry officer. Um, now, he did a cracking job in some of the battles in Missouri, and he's earned himself his own corps. And We'll have a quick look at that. So Wheeler's Cavalry Division, uh, Cavalry Corps, sorry. We've given him Forrest. I've moved Forrest out of Hardy's Corps and put him in here, basically, um, with his cavalry. With, so these guys are experienced Cav. So I've given them Burnside Carbines. They all had mixed Carbines earlier. Um, so we've got two Cav Divisions here. So let's just have a quick peek at them. Forrest, uh, he's got 7,131 men with seven guns. Seven Iron Napoleons. I will, I'm going to upgrade, upgrade these guys to uh, the proper Napoleons because they're a little bit better. The fire a bit, they're a bit more accurate in the fire, three rounds per minute rather than two point five, which might come in handy for these small cav units. Um, okay, then we've got George James with his brigade uh, division, even sorry. Uh, he's actually an artillery commander, but you know he's experienced. He's not very famous, but he's got decent stats. So I've, I'll give him the second division. And we've got some raw units in here again. So they're brand new. We'll have to see how they get on. But this is going to be a raiding force, basically. This whole core. We're going to go up there and we're going to cause havoc as, as much havoc as we can. So we've got more guys from Tennessee, Burnside Carbines again. And we're left with mixed carve weapons for this last unit um, from the Indian Territory. Because I've got nothing else to give out. But we've also got these guys with 12 pound Napoleon. So Wheeler's Core. Almost 11,000, all cavalry and horse artillery with 14 guns. I am recruiting more cav here, just one more unit, just to pop back into Hardy's core, because obviously they're a little short. Oh, we've got Wharton as well, actually, here. So they must have just arrived. It's going to take the cav in this in Hardy's core back up to where it was, basically, once we put that other unit across. We've got a couple of spare infantry units as well. Uh, who we'll, we'll send out in a moment once winter quarters are over and I know exactly where we're going to fight from. We don't want too many new troops in the different units. But anyway, this is the Army of Tennessee. So we've reorganized things a little bit. We've got Wheeler in charge of his own corps. It's a small corps. It's a cavalry corps. Um, now, the Army of Missouri. The Army of Missouri is huge. And it's under Beauregard still. 111,000 men, 260 guns. This is our biggest army by by far. Uh, okay, let's go through the core individually. We've got Price. He's at St. Louis. 
He's got 36,000 men, 63 guns. Again, we're a little short on guns, so maybe we'll add some more once some more come in here. Uh, actually, I'll tell you what, we'll, we'll recruit somebody straight into Frost. We can do with some more guns for him. Uh, let's get those guys from Georgia. James R. Branch. Yeah, he's looking, he's looking all right, actually. Um, but we don't want them to have six-pound field guns. I'm sure we've got something better to give them. Iron Napoleons, they'll have to do. All right, so that's another eight guns for him. Let's take them to 71, which is obviously a little bit better. Um, so, they, they, yeah, they're looking pretty good here. They've got cavalry troops with reasonable weapons and guns attached. A few infantry divisions, McCulloch, Walker... And Frost. All these guys are experienced. All of these units are fort battles. Pillow. This is the Arkansas district. These guys are nearly all new troops. I mean, some of them have fought a couple of battles or one battle. Uh, Armstrong's Brigade, for example, they fought a battle. Armed with Lawrence's. Springfield muskets. Reboard muskets. And Napoleon's attached. Uh, again, Pillow's Corps, 71 guns, 21,000 men. Jones's division, 7,800 men. Mostly armed with muskets. That is a problem. So we've got four brigades there. And of those four, three armed with muskets. And one is armed with Augustine rifle muskets, which are not much better. And these are actually draft troops from Louisiana. I can't remember recruiting drafts, but I must have done. The rest are all volunteers. But anyway, Pillow's uh, core is pretty raw. Most of these guys have not fought. See, hey, this unit hasn't fought a battle. They haven't. And they haven't. Raw, raw. New troops, new troops. Armstrong's fought one battle. So actually, um, uh, four nose guns, they fought. But that's it. So, McRae, all new troops. So pillows, guys, are nearly all new troops. So we've got to watch what we're doing with those guys, basically. Uh, Stewart's division. Springfield muskets, Lawrence rifles, and 12 pound Napoleon. So, yeah, it's a fairly poorly armed division. Fairly poorly armed and fairly new. So, we will have to keep an eye on those guys. Uh, Smith's Reserve Corps. It's not really a reserve corps anymore, but I'm going to keep the name. <laughs> We've bumped Little up to Division Command. If we have a look at him, you can see why I bumped him up. I did talk about it previously, so that's why. He's a really solid looking commander and he's experienced an infantry commander. Um, he's got a division here and we put Cummings in. These guys are veterans. They've fought a lot of battles. They've took part in all three of those Jefferson City battles. Uh, but they have got two new units here. So we've got guys from Mississippi and Louisiana joining them. Ashby's guys. Mixed muskets. And Eccles Brigade with Springfield muskets. I'm sure we've got something better than mixed muskets. I mean, we definitely have Springfield muskets. So we can at least give them those. It's a bit annoying we can't give reboard muskets out because we have got 1,500 of those, but Springfields will have to do. Uh, we do have more weapons on order, like I said. So Smith, um, we're also recruiting an artillery division in there. So again, these are going to be brand new troops. Obviously, we're not going to keep them as six-pounders, but I'm leaving them for now until these guys are recruited and we can see what we've got. So that'll take Smith to 53 guns and 17,000 men. Cheat them. Those guys are veterans. They've done a lot of fighting. 15,000 men, 40 guns. Yeah, pretty good. Nicely armed. The infantry also very well armed. Well, at least well armed. <laughs> uh, Clark is no longer defamed either. If you remember, he was defamed. Reboard muskets, Lawrence's, Lawrence's, Fayetteville, and Mississippi rifles. So, yeah, they're, they're not bad. Van Dorn's division. Uh, pff, division. Core again. These guys are uh, Taylor with Sharps. 10 pound parrots, Richmond carbines, Springfield rifles, Plains rifle, Fayetteville, Richmond, Fayetteville, and Plains rifles. So these guys are nicely armed. They could do with some rifle artillery in here, but we haven't got any. Posey, this is just the engineer guys. I mean, I'm not expecting these dudes to do any fighting. Not really, anyway. Which is why they're all with mixed muskets. But I'm actually going to go ahead and give these guys some better weapons. In case they get caught up in anything. And again, we can't give out reborn muskets even though we've got 1,500 of them. 
There's only 1,409 plus 69 disabled, but, well, let's at least give them Springfield muskets. All right. Um, so the only forces that we haven't really gone over is this little flying corps, which is a little independent corps, just kind of whipping around. That they, We took Muskogee, that fort that was bothering me. <laughs> this is a little reserve force. It's less than 5,000 men, 12 guns. They're kind of just staying in Arkansas for now. This is a fort down here, 3,000 men in it. We've got a fort at Bowling Green as well. Uh, a fort on the river here and a fort somewhere along here. Fort Fulton, yeah. And we've also got a fort Kershaw, which is going to have about 3,000 men at St. Louis. As you can see, with the little huts here, we're still in winter quarters. But it won't be much longer. Uh, in the east, there's nothing happening really. Let's have a quick look at the army nonetheless. Lee in charge, 76,000 men, 150 guns, 4,000 disabled, that's more than I would thought. Um, again, not very well armed really, Napoleon's there, no guns attached, I mean the, the infantry's well armed, on the whole. Yeah, pretty well armed anyway. Mostly rifles, a few, a handful of muskets here and there. Uh, in fact, neither that whole division had muskets, but uh, most of them are well armed. Some rifle guns there, a poor carve weapons, some more rifles. And we've got Magruder's core. Fairly poor, actually, fairly poorly armed, but like I said, there's not actually been anything going on and mixed weapons, uh, carve weapons. South Carolina Corps, just a little reserve force, really, in Carolina, South Carolina. Flying Corps, Army of the Northwest, again, these guys are in. Uh, Western Virginia with nothing much going on. Eastern HQ, these dudes are just sort of waiting to go out to, to their units, but uh, I'm just leaving them where they are for now. Engineers. And then that's it. So that's all the forces gone through. Um, we've taken Indus Industry 4. We've got that policy. I haven't taken a new policy because, frankly, I don't really want to do any of them. We may go with Conscription Act 2. I'm not entirely convinced on that just yet. We might do it, I mean, because it extends contracts again. So we'll keep that one in the wings. But for now, I'm going to actually start the campaign. That's enough talking. I feel like I've been talking for ages. I'm going to have a quick drink, and then we'll cra crack on with the episode. All right, then. So uh, I'm going to press play here. And like I say, we're not actually going to do much just now. We're waiting for winter quarters to be over, and we'll get moving once that occurs. Unless the Union does something else, of course. I feel like we're due an epic showdown out here in the West. That feels like it's on the card to me. I'm sure it does to you as well if you follow the series. So I'm going to move these engineers out to Franklin. And I'm going to build another fort here. Just to slow any advance on St. Louis. Because we will be leaving St. Louis behind soon we're going to concentrate and we're going to fight a huge battle here somewhere i've also sent up a little fleet here river scout four so they're just up here they're blockading kind of causing a nuisance but there's nothing much up here i just want to have a look basically at this army of missouri which is reasonably small so I'm thinking we might take those guys on with the Arkansas District and give those guys a bit of experience before we fight a real battle. But we do know the Union has about 25,000 men around this area of Warsaw. Unless they've joined up here, but I'm not sure about that. Alright, so we're constructing our fort. They're expensive, 14 million. We're on BBB Plus, so it's not all bad. Let's have a quick look at the project. Assignable only. Industry subsidy. Um... Yeah, okay. In terms of the industry, I've built a couple of factories around the place, but uh, nothing too exciting. We could actually build another factory. I'm going to maybe build one up here. Mm, only 75% workforce available. Maybe not there after all. 83% around Nashville. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Still in winter quarters. I think you stay in winter quarters until the very end of March. 
Got to keep half an eye on the Union making a move here any anywhere. So we've got our Musketoons available. Let's give them out. 10,000 weapons don't last as long as you think they would. <laughs> So most of our guys out here in the far west are actually armed pretty well. Burn sites, I mean, they're a bit short range, but that's not too bad. Uh, Springfield Musketoons, they're fine. Yep, so that's these weapons gone. All right, well, <laughs> at least we've got some given out. Um... We got some more rifles as well, I think, because they were due at the same time. So let's go ahead and upgrade some of these rifles to Enfield rifles. Who was it that had Springfield muskets? Uh, I know these guys did, but I thought there was a whole force that had Springfields. Uh, I can't for the life of me remember. I mean, some of these dudes obviously have Springfield muskets. Ah, so it was this guy, uh, Jones's division. We're going to give out some Enfields to them. And hope we don't waste them on these new troops. <laughs> um, Alright, so that, that's looking a bit better. Okay, cool. So we've given out some new weapons there. Let's speed time away. We're still in winter quarters. The Union passes the Revenue Act, so they're pulling in the money. They're back on 35 national morale, so they, they are improving. The Roller Depot now has is a double-sized depot, and we've got some actual things in it. I think building the market here has helped bring supply in. Let's take a quick look at the supply overview. Yeah, so you can see the supply is rolling in. As always, supply in Kentucky is hard to come by. It used to be that like that in Missouri, but we've really worked at it. And obviously, since we've got a massive troop, co troop concentration there, we've kind of had to work at it. Uh, quick look at the fleet. We've got a couple of these captured ships ready, but eh. Well, you know what? Let's pop them into the uh, into the River, James River Squadron. Might as well. We're building the CSS Stonewall, an ocean ironclad ram, and a couple of tin-clad gunboats. So when they're ready, they're going to go into the Charleston Squadron, which is a fair-sized squadron. A bunch of uh, frigates and s sloops of war. And we'll have this stone wall in there as well, and we'll see how that works out for it. Okay, so we are now almost in April. Just slowed it down a little bit. I'm pretty sure come April, that's it. Out of winter quarters, I, I think. Yeah, we're out of winter quarters, okay. You can tell because these have now changed to tents. <laughs> Right, so we're going to waste no time here. Let's, well, we're wasting a little bit of time. Let's have a quick look at Pillow. Uh, Price is still waiting on this artillery battalion, which is going to be three more days. Pillow. Ten pound parrots. Para rifles. Yep, awesome. Napoleons. The only problem with Pillow is that these guys are very raw. So it's this going to, almost going to be like a new battle. A new... Uh, like at the start of the game. Hang on. Let's see if we've got something better to give him. Maybe yeah, we've got some more Enfields. Let's give them out. Alright, so I'm fairly happy with Pillow. It's kind of as good as it's going to get. Poor commander as well here. Oof. can only hope he gets better. We haven't really got any decent commanders to give out for these guys. Very, very poor. At least he's got decent weapons. Okay. <laughs> Smith. Da, da, da. Right. 
So we're going to go on an offensive with this unit. I want to push up here. And I want to see if the AI does anything. So I'm going to bring this flying core up, actually. And we're going to bring them up to, to take the place of Pillow. And let's get Wheeler's core. And let's send them this way. I'm going to switch them to defensive movement because I don't really want them engaging these guys up here. We just want to slip past them and nip up into here. So Donaldson's going to advance again. He's going to advance up to here. Let's slow this right down. Ah, Fort Ward is finished, so that's the fort right here. Arkansas District is moving up. The Reserve Corps is also pulled up. Uh, I'm going to put a garrison into Fort Ward real quick. We've taken the depot up here. Uh, it's got some nice stuff in it, actually, so that's good. I want to push up to take Warsaw. Ooh. All right, so, yeah, we've come in contact with them. Um, with Canby. So that he must be up here. You can't actually see him on the map, but I think... These must be this must be a unit that was at Warsaw. All right, so this is a, this is a fair test for this guy actually, and he's got I mean he's got to have help from the reserve corps in eight hours. But before that, it's going to be pretty even numbers. But when once Smith arrives with the reserve corps, uh, it'll be more tricky. So let's fight this battle. All right, so there we are then. Uh, I'm not sure why it's showing me the battle guide, but uh, I don't know. Um, okay, so strength of 23,000 men and 18 guns that's not many guns for them i mean if that's accurate of course the enemy army is green they can't be green we've definitely fought this army before i mean maybe some of their troops are all right so uh what we got here we are attacking the enemy yeah that seems fair enough to me we have moved up into their land uh the wire road right up here we're gonna have to be careful with this yeah that's the only objective just the wire road all right that's that's cool so let's just quickly check on smith Seven hours from Fayetteville. So I'm guessing that's probably down here. Let's come out of the HQ view. So we're not really in a hurry here at all. Um, to, to fight, basically. Uh, not in the slightest, in fact. Since we'll have the manpower on him once Smith arrives. What have we got here for guns? Nice, all rifled. We've got so many troops in the field now, I forget who's who. <laughs> right, so McRae's Cav, we're going to send them out first to see if we can find the enemy. Let's get started. I'm going to detach Ray, actually. So I can then give a core level command to move our guys forward. This is Pillow's first command of a fight uh, all by himself, I think. He has been involved in a couple of the fights out here in Missouri. So the objective is right here. I suspect he's probably going to be lined up somewhere around here on these hills. Or maybe covering the crossing. If he's got any sense, that's what he'd be doing. I think, anyway. <laughs> that's what I would do. I think this guy's picture, I've seen it a few times, uh, Martin E. Green. He always kind of looks like he's surprised to be there, I think. Aha. So I put the scouts out and we could see him there. 
That's all right. That's a decent position for him. But it means we can't cross here. So we can cross pretty much unmolested. Um, what we will do, I'm going to move him over here. See if we can get a better look at them. I guess we're going to set our artillery up here and we'll pound him. We'll send a force across the river. We'll attack his right flank. We'll keep him pinned with troops here. We'll see how this goes. Ooh, his guns are in range already. This is the scouts out. We'll have to bear in mind we need to cross this creek. Um, so we might be better off crossing a bit further up, giving them a moment to get everything organised, and then we'll press on and pull in and get our artillery up on this nice hill. He's covering this further crossing as well. Decent move from him. Looks like he's mostly got horse artillery. Some of these guys are wavering already as well. Moving these guys around. All right. Ah, Napoleon's. Darn it. <laughs> I don't know why they're marching this way. I'm pretty sure that's not the way I told them to go. Ah, oh, no. Never mind. Uh, like I say, we're not in any hurry here. Quite the opposite, in fact. We're waiting for our reserves. I'm going to take a handful of casualties as they're marching past here, but that's just the way it is. Right, so Jones's boys are going to cross the river here. Seems like more than 18 guns firing at us. This is our guns getting in place. They must have some pretty good guns, actually, to be able to hit us here. We'll just send some skirmishers forward, just see if we can take a bit of that artillery fire. So, I mean, as is fairly standard, we can't hardly get a shot up at all. Okay, so we're going to come over the river and we're staying back a little.
Not sure why these guys aren't firing. Obviously, don't fancy it. Fair bit of fire raining down, but doesn't seem like it would cause much effect. Alright, so we're getting some of our boys over the river here. Remember, this is these guys' first combat for most of them. So we've got to be a bit careful. I mean, some of their guys are flashing. So I don't know, maybe, maybe they're on low morale or low supply or maybe they're drafts. I'm not sure. A lot of fire from our guns as well. Not very effective, but it's keeping them busy. I'm going to launch the cavalry over the river, and we're going to hit them in the flanks as we're going in from the right. But, like I say, I'm not in a rush here at all. I'm going to let these guys get in position. Oh, he's moving. He's obviously spotted our men coming over the river. Let me just send the, I'm gonna send these guys down just to give a bit of fire. They've got quite long range with their Enfields and Richmond carbines. How has that infantry disappeared? Ah, uh -huh, there they are. I'm going to see if this draws any of his men out. Probably won't. I just see our men were out at the time, especially when they're doing this. Yeah, that does not look good. Doesn't look like the kind of thing I like to see. What are they doing? This is... Honestly, it's head batter in some this game.
Nice little bit of firing. I could get a little closer with the guns, but just out of canister range. Don't want to get shot with it. Oop. Oh, we must have sent them packing. Nice. These guns over here are causing us some bother. They must be good rifle guns. Punishment this uh, this brigade 500 casualties. Nice job from Howell and uh, Green. Sent them running. Excellent job. See if they actually manage to engage these guys. They might not. Why? What is going on here? Look at this. I wondered how come these guys weren't in position. It's because they are stuck. They must obviously be suffering from morale penalties here. Uh, okay, let's mount these guys up. Oh. Pull those guns out. They are struggling a little here. Unstable. Alright, mount up, boys. Send troops out to meet us, but these guys are still marching around. I mean, what the hell? Where are they going? It's unreal. This honestly, sometimes this is just so annoying. Not sure if this was a stupid move. We'll try it anyway. Some shots off into these guns. End of the day, alright. Troops resupplied. Uh, Smith arrives, alright, so day two. And oh, Jones is meant, honestly. Alright, at least we can reform them. We'll just. Let's just hang fire right here. 
you guys better not go anywhere else. We've lost a few guns and some men in the artillery, but, you know, that's okay. Wharton's guys. What about Smith? Where is he at? All right. Oh, I never upgraded these guns, and they're broken. Oh, cohesion broken, that's okay. Right, so at least these are going to lose their first battle perk, even though they're probably not going to be too involved in here, but these are all just six pounders. I never upgraded them. Uh, first battle for some of these guys as well, so that's awesome. Actually, they're going to lose that debuff. Nice. And some of these guys are veteran troops, obviously, like uh, Barton and his brigade. All right, cool. Let's start day two. Whoa. Whoa, I'm not sure what this is about. Why are they moving there like that? Right. So he's reformed his trenches along this way. Ooh, why don't he put some men across the river? What the heck? What the hell? Why would he do that? Get after him, Wharton. Damn it, we're going to miss out the chance to take him on. Never mind. Why are we not moving? Wharton's a decent commander. So these guys have regained their cohesion. Let's give them long range orders and we're going to send them in. Okay, Jones, go. Not really sure why he's pushing on this river. But I guess he hasn't got much choice <laughs> but to do something.
took a can. Okay, we're going to press Wharton over the river. And we're going to send Breckenridge over this way. Let's get this attack in. Come on. See how this goes crossing the river. I'm going to double time these guys in. Jones's brigade. Into the flank of this unit. Get it done. Pushing the river crossing is always going to be grim. You're going to lose men. If you wouldn't mind just facing the enemy, uh, that would be great. And if you guys could just go a little bit faster, please, that might be good as well. Disappointing with this division on the right. It's so slow. It's a good job Armstrong's remember the first over, because they're at least not uh, brand new troops. They're still going to get slaughtered here because of this, whatever it is that they're doing. Oh! What happened to them? 29 casualties and running. First Brigade seems invincible here. Let's just, instead of being clumped up like this, why don't we just line up and start firing? I mean, they've lost 500 men. Okay, let's press in on the flanks here. I honestly don't know what this brigade's doing. Messed up and taking forever. But, I mean, thankfully these guys have arrived. 
charging. No, don't charge. That means they're going to break if they're charging. That always happens. Oh, my God. No charging, man. No charging. Look, the first car was routed somehow. I'm yeah, there they go, running. Ah, honestly. <sighs> messy. Very messy. This is just... This river crossing is just beyond a joke. And they're going to be able to pull out of here? Oh, are you serious? Jesus. Our flanking forces are still not in position. Our guys are still not over the river. I just don't get it. I mean, I understand it's a river, but come on, let's get a move on. Okay, I'm going to get Barton's veterans over here. What is the AI doing? Why are they clumped up in the middle? I mean... Oh, very poor. Poor battle. Some of these battles feel like chores. I don't know about you when you're playing, but... Sometimes when I play this game, it really feels like it's a really a real chore. And that's always disappointing to say that kind of thing. Like, what, what on earth are these guys doing? I think we're back to the crap AI. I mean, I know I've lost a few men here, but uh, the AIs just do nothing. They just clumped up, standing around, doing nothing at all. Casualties are not as crazy as usual, but we did have to attack over this river. It seems to be a lot of this, like uh, the guys sort of jerking back and forward, not doing anything.
And a lot of this kind of thing. Like, why is that going back to column? I don't know. Yeah, they're pulling out, I mean, to be expected. <laughs> Not really a hugely fun battle, it was a bit strange and uh, it felt buggy. At least these guys are going to lose their first battle perk. And that's something at least. Let's flick to a major victory, that's nice. Alright, so major victory. We lost 2,300 men, they lost 6,000. 20 guns. It was frustrating, but a victory is a victory. April the 9th, 1863. So this could be the last real offensive, I guess. I mean, if uh, if we manage to defeat the Union here. A couple more victories like this, and surely that's going to be his national morale plummeting. If he gets to 25 or lower, or below 25, I think, then that's campaign over. I'm not sure what to do once this campaign's finished. I could start a new campaign with the Union. Could try a new game. Anybody got something in mind? If you have, let me know. Um, we've earned a total victory. Enemy army running for their lives. They lost 6,000 men. 749 killed. Zero captured. Yeah. 2,397 casualties for us. 298 killed. 431 missing. We captured 3,000 rifles and 11 guns. See if anything obvious stands out in the weapons. Oh yeah, we've got some three-inch ordnance and a couple of uh, parrots. Not bad. Ah, now James rifles have arrived. Sixty-six of those, so we'll be able to replace some of the smooth balls with rifles not that the james rifle is amazing but it is a bit better than the smooth ball i think even though it has less range it has better accuracy we have 10 ordnance and we've got some more on order as well coming in 42 days nice other than that weapons wise i think we maybe capture some reboard muskets but i think that's it Maybe some Springfields. Oh, and the Whitworth rifles have arrived. 10,000 of those. 
Awesome. So I'm going to give those rifles out off screen after we finish the, this this run through, which is just about now, to be honest. Uh, it's been quite a long episode with me going through all those bits and pieces. So let's just take a quick look. So we've defeated them up here. That should send him to Scotland, and hopefully it'll cause a reaction from this army, this group of troops up here. That would be nice if it did. We've got the depot up here, so we should be able to resupply quite nicely because there was plenty in there, so he should be able to suck this dry and replenish our troops. Smith isn't in range of that one, but I think he's in range of this depot, so yeah, he's fine there. He's carrying a lot of disables around now, though, 2,700. No change for any of these. Ah, uh, well, I think maybe Jones got a little bit better there. Not that he deserved it, since that was a pretty poor performance from him. <laughs> Advancing wise. Let's give Jones some of these Whitworths. Yep. Awesome. Uh, let's do him a green and white uniform. That we should be able to, we should be able to pick him out on the battlefield, I hope. Alright, so that was pretty cool. I'm going to give these guys one of those three inch ordnance packages. <laughs> Who was that again? That was Smith's core. And some James rifles. And some more James rifles, if I can find them. Nice. So. That's going to be it for today's episode. It was, I think it's, it'll be pretty long by the time I've uh, edited it out and put the bits together and everything. <laughs> um, so we had a nice battle here. Got a victory up in the northwest area of Missouri. And we're going to push up further. Let's see if we can draw some of these guys away and see what happens with that. Uh, in the meantime, I do hope that you enjoyed the episode. I hope you liked the battle. I hope you weren't too bored by me going through all the bits and pieces. <laughs> um, but either way, I hope you're going to come back and watch the rest of the series or catch up with what you've missed. Uh, subscribe so you don't miss the content. Check out the playlists. And I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Have a great day, whatever you're doing. ta for now.